What's up guys, this is Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Today we're going to talk about the differences in pressure that a scuba diver needs to understand. Now there's several different types of pressure that we're going to talk about today. The first one of course is going to be atmospheric pressure. So I'm going to write atmospheric up here at the top. We're also going to talk about gauge pressure or what's otherwise known as sometimes hydrostatic pressure. So we're going to write that down here. And then of course last we're going to talk about atmospheric absolute or sometimes referred to as absolute atmospheric or what I like to call just simply total pressure. So I'm going to write it right here. Total pressure. Now, trying to understand what each of these pressures represents, we need to break it down and see where we deal with them as a scuba diver. So basically, the atmospheric pressure is going to be here at the surface. If you look outside right now, you're probably looking at a nice pretty blue sky. And we understand that blue sky is actually the atmosphere itself. And that atmosphere actually puts weight on us. And we know that weight and pressure are pretty much the same thing. So that atmospheric pressure that we deal with here at the surface or what we call one ATA or one bar is exactly 14.7 pounds per square inch that's pushing in on our body. So when we say atmospheric pressure, we're simply talking about the pressure of the atmosphere here at the surface. And it's constant, it never changes. Uh, that's something that we can always rely on. So we're gonna keep atmospheric pressure here at the surface. Now, if you go back to your open water class, pull out your open water manual, you'll probably remember that your instructor showed you a chart very similar to this, that's our atmospheric chart, if you will. And we understand that every 10 meters or 33 feet of salt water, or if you dive fresh water, of course, it'd be 34 feet, but every 10 meters or 33 feet that we go down, we go through a new pressure change or a new atmospheric pressure. So we're going to increase the pressure on our body by an additional 14.7 PSI as we descend down through the water column. Now that pressure that we deal with of course is called gauge pressure or hydrostatic pressure. Hydro simply means water and it's the water pressure that's pushing in on our body and that's what we mean when we say gauge or hydrostatic pressure. So that additional 14.7 PSI what we have to remember is is even though we're adding that it doesn't get rid of the initial 14.7 psi up here at the surface or the atmospheric pressure so we're constantly have to add that together and if we simply take the atmospheric pressure add it to the gauge pressure that will actually give us the total pressure now the reason we have to do that once again is because the atmospheric pressure never changes it's constant the gauge pressure hydrostatic will change depending on what depth you're at but the initial 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure that's on our body from the atmosphere never changes. It's always there. It's always constant. So if I take the atmospheric pressure and I take the gauge or hydrostatic pressure, add the two together, that will give me my total pressure. So at the surface, I have a total of 14.7 pounds per square inch pushing in on my body or weight, if you will. At a depth of 10 meters, 33 feet, that's two atmospheres or two bars. I'm going to have a total of 29.4 PSI pounds per square inch course of weight pushing in on my body and that's simply the gauge pressure here plus the atmospheric pressure up to the surface to make the total pressure of the 29.4 and so forth and so on. I can do it at 3 bar, 4 bar, 5 bar and all the way down. So guys, I hope that makes it a little bit easier for you to understand how gauge pressure, atmospheric pressure and total pressure works. If you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can and as quickly as I can. Guys, I want to say real quick, we are planning a future uh, live Q&A session. Uh, if you guys have a particular time that you would like us to go live, let us know. We're doing a little bit of testing now, but let us know down in the comment section below when you want to see us go live and put some questions down there. We're going to try our best to answer all the questions that we can. We don't know if it'll be a 10 minute live video, a 20 minute or even a 30 minute live video. We're not sure yet, but I just want to give you guys a heads up. If you got any questions, Stay tuned for a live video and let me know what time would work best for you, whether you're in Eastern Time, Central Time, Pacific Time, or whatnot. Let me know where you're at and what will work best for you guys. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. If you like it, do me a huge favor. Smash that like button for me. Let me do it down in the comment section below what you think. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.
Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.